The stark reality of all of us is that we are now facing the most consequential strategic realignment since the end of World War II. And our region, the Indo-Pacific, is at the epicentre of this change. That's uh, Senator Reynolds, uh, Minister of Defence. The world is in the middle of a fundamental change in the character of war, in which those who best master cyber warfare, precision-guided munitions, drones and advanced satellite communications will win the battle. Mark Milley, US Joint Chiefs uh, Chairman. Um, good morning, my name is Todd Alder and as introduced uh, three years ago I was appointed the Managing Director of Orbital UAV with a very clear mandate and that was to take a clever engineering company and transition it into a global aerospace and defence business. Orbital UAV make engines for military drones. We're a ASX listed company and since the three years of my appointment, the staff and team have secured a primary engine supply contract to Boeing in situ, a contract that has us develop and supply the engines for all of Boeing in situ's tactical drones. We have two of the five engines under that contract, so two engine models in that five engine contract in production one here in Perth and one in our US facility. We have also won engine development contracts with Northrop Grumman, a large US tier one defence prime, and with one of Singapore's largest defence companies. Revenue over the last three years has gone from 15 million to 33.8 million, and we're forecasting 40 to 50 million this year. Three years ago, our share price was 30 cents. It's now somewhere over a dollar. And there's a lot more to come as we'll demonstrate in the slides. First of all, we make engines for tactical drones. What are tactical drones? They're not the combat UAVs or the combat drones. And what is UAV? Unmanned air vehicle. So it's not a combat UAV because uh, they fly with, you know, uh, 1.7 tonnes worth of payload and uh, generally have jet engines powering them. That's not our industry. The tactical drone, however, is used for surveillance, reconnaissance, etc. Um, that is the industry or the market that we provide the propulsion systems to. We then don't provide them for the mini UAVs, often hand-held and hand-launched, battery-operated. A little bit of what we supply is a catapult launched scan eagle here. So this is our engine on the back of this, it's our engine on the back of this vehicle as well. And soon our engine to be on the back of this one, this financial year. These are flown at around 10 to 20,000 feet, carry about a 20, kilometer, a 20 kilogram payload um, and have air, night and various other LIDAR, VIDAR, so laser mapping terrain. Um, payloads. They used to be worth $250,000 and have one camera up the front. Um, that was some 10 years ago. Now they're worth somewhere like three to six million dollars and they're carrying some highly sophisticated um, surveillance and reconnaissance equipment. So the reliance on a propulsion system that can launch that, take it out on a mission from anywhere between eight to 24 hours and then bring it home safely is critically important. Hence our opportunity. The people that uh, play in this market or the people that build these tactical drones are generally large US tier one defense companies. So Boeing in situ on the top uh, left there. We've got Textron Systems, Northrop Grumman, et cetera, et cetera. All multi-billion dollar US tier one um, companies. Most, sorry, all of these companies here that I've got listed uh, have or are developing tactical drone capability. None of them build their own engines. Much like the commercial aerospace industry where you've got Boeing and Airbus, Boeing and Airbus don't build their own engines. That's Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney and GE. So very similar in this tactical drone market, here is where we see our opportunity. Um, 
And why does a Perth company have such an opportunity? Well, number one, these vehicles must run on a heavy fuel or a kerosene-based fuel, a fuel that you have out on your mission compound or on your Navy vessel, a lower volatile fuel. When you run an engine typically on that fuel, it gets dirty quickly and it doesn't last very long. Orbital, many times evolved, has got some technology that enables us to run this fuel in these types of engines very well. We actually have 65 patents covering the geometry of the engine, covering the fuel delivery and covering a bunch of the software uh, that enable us to build an engine that looks something like that, and we've bought one in today, but to uh, build an engine that looks something like that, that essentially is from the wings back. So we produce the entire back half of these tactical drones. Our engine with the technology that we have runs for 500 hours before you need a major overhaul. And that's compared to our competitors of 50 hours. Now the importance of that, obviously, is you don't want your marines having to do major overhauls out on site. That's where you make mistakes. You make mistakes, then you have a poor engine, and then you have a vehicle that goes down. So it's number one cause of failures. Another big advantage that we have is we start straight away. So we start in two minutes, not 20 minutes. When you need to start these types of engines on a heavy fuel without our technology, you need to warm it up for 20 to 30 minutes. So it's warm enough before it starts. Right? That can be a bit of a problem when you've got an unscheduled requirement to get eyes in the sky, as you can imagine, waiting around for 20 minutes. This uh, US FAR 33.49, that's a manned aerospace reliability standard. Our engine is the only engine that passes that test, not just once, but back to back three times. So it's a, a leap ahead in reliability for engines in this class of vehicle. Um, and is why uh, our cornerstone customer, Boeing in situ, and we call it Boeing in situ because in situ is the subsidiary within Boeing's defense company that build all their tactical drones. And we have a contract to provide them with all of their engines for all of their vehicles. And if you like, their vehicles are listed down here. All of them, apart from this one that's a new introduction, all of these are flying. So our product is replacing legacy engines. So our product that we are manufacturing and shipping on a weekly basis goes into these vehicles that are operating around the world um, and to provide them with greater reliability. As I said, we have five to get into production. We have two that are in production now, with the third one that we're working on, and that will come into production this financial year. And then the following financial year, we'll be working on four and five. Each of these engines provides us with somewhere between 15 to $25 million in recurring annual revenue. So if we show this slide again, and we say there are opportunities, each one of these companies build tactical drones. None of them produce their own engines. We have secured, or our most mature customer is Boeing in situ on that top left. We've announced a development contract with Northrop Grumman, and we would hope we could sort of emulate what we're doing with Boeing in situ. And during this financial year, I'm confident we'll announce one, possibly two further customers for, um, for our engines. In addition to our engines replacing older or legacy engines, there's growth in this market. And two significant contracts that are running at the moment is the US Army is uh, looking to introduce new capabilities. These are a number of the companies that are bidding for that work. This is uh, a significant contract, if you can imagine, with the US Army. Something similar going on with the Australian Army and Navy, also looking to improve its capability. Um, what you'll notice is some of the names on here we are either dealing with now or are part of our negotiations. So we would be confident that uh, we will be the engine provider for the winner of this US Army bid. And we would like to think that uh, we would be used as the Australian content since it's one of the globally recognised best engines anyway, but on the Australian content for one of these, one of the uh, uh, winners of that uh, contract. So <clears throat> I look at uh, what we're doing from now, if you like. So 
over the three years, terrific to have uh, a little bit of technology that works. Uh, the next step, very exciting to get that technology into an end customer, uh, Boeing in situ. Uh, but then something that we all learnt, it was uh, another step to get Boeing in situ confident enough to release it to the US Defence Forces, actually have it out in theatre. Uh, that happened for us uh, last financial year. And uh, since that's happened, we have got some great momentum behind the company. The end users are using it and terms like, where has this engine been all my life, et cetera, et cetera. So what we are now doing is tooling up, if you can imagine. We have a facility here in Perth. We've got Australian accents, and yet most of our customers are US military. So we set up a US facility right next to Boeing and Sitchi. Um, we also have recruited some ex-service men and women from the US Defence Forces, people that used to fly these tactical drones. Ex-Army Colonel Keith Hirschman, he actually flew in Afghanistan, flew in Iraq, went back to Washington to work with the Army and R&D in unmanned vehicles. He now works for us permanently and he's sort of in our um, business development. Global supply chain, uh, something that we are with a number of decades of experience, very good, another competitive advantage of us. Very good to come up with a great idea when you need to make lots of them every month. You need to have a supply chain that's going to go and support that. So some, a lot of work that we've done there. The end use, user engagement, I just spoke about that was uh, Keith Hirschman, etc. So what I'm trying to say with, uh, with this slide is that um, to get to where we are, which is cash flow positive, we're actually profitable. Um, we're looking forward to adding new customers in, uh, leveraging off some of the facilities and the people that we now have in place. Um, to do that has taken some time from that very first, I think we've got a great idea here. Yeah. So we've been through that journey. We're looking forward now to just adding in the revenue. Um, I think therefore in summary, we talked that the geopolitical landscape has changed. Defence is, and defence spending is now a priority. Um, the nature of conflict is evolving. Space, cyber and drone technology will hold the advantage. We are happy to play our part in providing a superior, more reliable engine for this drone sector. Um, we have our long-term contract with Boeing, two engines out of the five in production, so we have a nice growth path there. We've signed up with Northrop Grumman. Uh, we look forward to signing with further Tier 1 Defence Primes this financial year. Uh, revenue at 15, 33, 40 to 50. Um, I think we're really just starting uh, on, uh, on our success story. And I would say thank you very much for um, your attention to our uh, orbital story. Thank you. Thank you.